So here's the magic leap here with the analogics. Hi. Hi. So who are you? Hi, I'm Grazia Stefan with Analogic Semiconductor. Um, you're looking at the magic leap AR HMD. So uh, your chipset is inside? Yes, it, uh, our Slimport ANX 7530 is inside. To do what? It basically does the, the conversion from MIPI to DisplayPort um, and it's placed on the PCB inside the VR headset. Because your solution is great for VR, you have some. You're showing something about there. We are showing. And that's kind of a uh, around here. Is it this yeah. kind of solution you have inside? Exactly. This is. Uh, we announced this actually at Computex. Yeah. Uh, we, yeah. we announced this at Computex uh, in Taipei, um, and back in June. Uh, it's our second generation uh, Chicago chip that yeah. you just saw. That's inside the Magic Leap uh, headset, and we expect a lot of VR. Uh, manufacturers, uh, headset manufacturers. Why do they use this and not what they have before? What's this is actually, better about this? Uh, we increased, well, the resolution is higher. Uh, the package is also smaller, so it allows for cost savings on the bomb. And the, higher the speeds, higher resolution. Less heat, maybe? Yes, so every the, the whole performance of the system is improved. Um, you get higher resolution, faster refresh rates, uh, lower power and um, with a much smaller package. Up to what uh, resolution? Is it very high right here or? Yeah, this one I believe it, uh, it goes um, all the way up to 4K for both eyes. Nice, and over here you're showing the retimer systems. Yes. You also showed this at Computex, right? We showed this at Computex. We announced um, our 7440 family going into production in a whole bunch of, of um, uh, notebook, PCs, uh, ARM, and Windows. Um, it basically shows a cascading um, uh, daisy chaining uh, process. Uh, you have... What about here? It is a uh, one Chromebook? Well, this one... Chromebook? Yeah, it, oh, this it, one here? Yeah, it connects basically uh, between a, a source device and an external display. You have a system that goes from a USB 3.2 yeah. to a display port out and mode. So um, that means this MacBook has four type C's and they can all do power, they can all do display, they can all do everything. It's basic chaining, yeah. Basic all chaining. Yes. So it's just to make the type C port uh, universal and simple, you provide a solution to enable all this. Well, what the, what the retimer does, it allows, uh, now that the, the, the speeds are so high, they go all the way up to 10G, um, the signal, it's a signal conditioner um, that allows uh, the content to go throughout the whole system with no losses, uh, visual losses in, in, the, nice. in the actual quality. And you were in this Chromebook right here, an Intel Power Chromebook? Yes, we're in the Chromebooks. Um, and others with, with ARM our, too? With, yes, with our NX3429, uh, a whole bunch of uh, Chromebooks from Acer, from Lenovo, Asus, Samsung, HP, so they're all using our solution. Here you have a, a retimer solution, just like you saw in the daisy chain design for a smartphone. Yeah. And it goes, it allows for these high resolutions, 4K by 2K, uh, with concurrent DisplayPort and USB 3. So this is a, like a, a Type-C dock for the phone. It's, and this dock does a whole bunch of stuff just from one cable. It's actually, it, but this is uh, the PCB version, but you normally see this inside a phone. Inside the phone? Inside the phone, yes. Ah, okay. All right. And uh, uh, here's another Chromebook. This is another Chromebook design. It's using our 7447. It's a PD 3.0 uh, single chip solution um, in a whole bunch of Intel Gemini Lake uh, based platform. Um, nice. And what's he working over there? Um, He's actually uh, showing, we're showing here a, um, a VESA uh, display stream compression, a VSC compression. Um, using one of our chips. Uh, it's a timing controller that goes inside the actual panel. And what the system shows, uh, it basically shows you that um, it goes in and out of, of PSR uh, um, every couple of seconds. And it alternates between compressed and uncompressed images. Nice. So um, you work together with the uh, the Visa, which is doing the display port? Yeah, we, yes, we are a member of VESA. VESA is the, the body, the center's body that uh, has uh, 
uh, you're one of the main the, members, right? We are one of the main kind members. Kind of the founder yes. of the whole display port? Uh, yes, we actually go back, uh, way back to you where the display port. port. Pretty much, you yes. Did? Yeah. yes. And uh, what, what is this demo over here? This is another display panel. Yeah. Uh, this is another... Um, Close it to me. Oh. This is another... Uh, oh, timing controller uh, demo. Uh, it's using uh, a, a timing control uh, chip that we actually announced in September. Uh, it's the 2403. Um, it, it's uh, the first displayed HDR 400 uh, certified uh, IC. Display HDR 400. What is yes. that? Does it stand for HDR by display yeah. by the visa? VESA announced display HDR a few months ago. There are a few categories, and we are the first uh, semiconductor company that has a timing controller display HDR 400 certified. Because you need new uh, HDR displays, of course. You also need new uh, HDR-supported cables, or I mean, no? Yeah, um, there are a whole bunch of displays out there. They all say they display HDR, but now VESA has come up with this uh, truly comprehensive testing process um, and categorizes, actually, all the displays into these three different categories. Um, to support all the different types of HDR? Yes. HDR Plus, Dolby HDR Vision. 400, 600, um, a, th um, a thousand. So there are different categories, um, different testing procedures and processes, and we're uh, very happy that our chip has. Does 400 uh, means uh, peak luminance? Is 400 lumen? I don't know the details of the actual spec. Um, uh, VESA has published that on their website. There's and this? Here. Um, we show a 8-bit um, versus 8.2 um, demo. Basically, there is a, the source here is a quantum data generator. Um, there is a difference between 8-bit and 8.2 uh, when the FRC uh, with the FRC output. What is 8 plus 2? It's a different setting of the bit color. Mm. So, um, so. Uh, analog Jix is very busy with lots of things happening. We are doing a lot of things. We are very much involved um, in the interface connectivity space, um, as you've seen here in the display panel with timing controllers, as well as in uh, the VR, AR um, space. With all these uh, different all ones. These, these are all the high-end ones, right? Well, we are high-end and lower-end. So on the lower end, um, of the spectrum, we have the Microsoft Mixed Reality headsets that were announced last year. We're in all of them, including the second generation from all sorts of uh, suppliers like Samsung and Acer. And, um, we're also in a different, this is not really VR, it's more like a gaming console. How it's does a it work? It's, it's two a, phones? Um, yeah, it's actually from ASUS. It's, they um, promote this as a dual screen. Our, the same VR chip that you've seen in all these VR headsets is actually used in this uh, this particular application as a dual screen phone display. So you and put in your phone here, and here is an extra display, quite? Yes. Yeah. It's loading now. So it's using the it's display using port output of the Type C that is yes, supported in the phone. It's the same. It's a display port, the 1.4. Um, there's a receiver that has four lanes, and uh, there are two single MIPI DSI outputs. So uh, it seems that the DisplayPort uh, Alt mode on Type-C has been uh, very popular, right? It is very popular. How did you manage to do this? Well, um, again, we have been in the DisplayPort uh, area for many, many years. Um, we're always trying to innovate um, and trying to come up with different use cases uh, to improve the user experience. Uh, and DisplayPort uh, right now is, is the only uh, interface that can achieve those uh, levels of quality 